I know many of you are used to buying the box of matzo ball mix and just adding the ingredients and bing bam boom it's done. But you know what? You can add a lot more flavor, a lot less salt, and for a lot less money have twice as many matzo balls. And it's really very easy. So I thought today we would make matzo balls. First thing we need to do is separate four eggs. I've separated three, but I wanted to show you how to separate. Crack the eggshell, open it up to one side. That way, some of the egg white is a dripping off, but the egg yolk stays in the shell. Don't worry if the shell looks bad. We've got a nice smooth uh, edge there. You're going to take your, this, the empty shell and place it just below the edge because if you place it right at the edge, the egg yolk can crack. Making Separating egg yolks from egg white for this purpose will not matter if we have a teeny bit of yolk in the egg white. But in most cases, it is very important not to have any yolk in your egg white because the yolk is fat. And if there's the presence of any fat, your egg white won't beat up. Okay, so here I have my egg white and my egg yolk. Egg yolks go there, egg white go in the bowl. You just want to whisk your whites until they're frothy. You do not have to whisk them into peaks. This way you incorporate some air. Some people like to use club soda. And some of the mixes actually have kosher for Passover baking powder in them. I don't use that. Okay, now I don't have to clean the whisk. It doesn't matter if a little egg white goes into my egg yolk. I'm going to break up my egg yolks. I am going to add a third of a cup of water, or in this case it's chicken stock. I'm going to add a tablespoon of finely chopped parsley. That is mostly for color. You could use any herb, but then it would give it a distinctive flavor. And since I only use fresh dill in my soup, I didn't want to use dill in the matzo balls. Going to add my spices, my salt, my pepper, a little bit of ginger, and garlic powder. And then I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of either peanut oil or vegetable oil or chicken fat. In this case, I'm using homemade chicken fat, rendered chicken fat, which also had some onion in it. So although the pieces of onion aren't there, I will have the good flavor of the onion. Mix that together well, add it to the egg white. Just mix that together well to, so that your egg, it almost creates an emulsion so that you don't have greasy, heavy matzo balls. And then add one and a quarter cups of matzo meal. Stir it together until it's well combined. Now, the most important thing to remember about working with matzo meal is it must be allowed to sit and to hydrate to absorb that moisture. If you look at a mixture, let's say for matzo balls, and you go, oh, Tina, this is too gloppy. I can't make matzo balls out of this. And you tend to add more matzo meal, you're going to be in for a surprise when you have very firm matzo balls. Now, later on, I will show you when we're cooking the matzo balls, if you want to make heavy matzo balls or light matzo balls, the right way to do it. So now our mixture is all mixed. We will cover it, put it in the refrigerator, and let it sit for an hour, two hours, whatever you've got. If you really have to push it, probably you can get away with a half hour, but really no less than that. Now I'm going to make the matzo balls. First thing is to bring a pot of water to a boil, or you can use chicken soup. But you never want to use the chicken soup that you're going to be eating because little fragments of the matzo ball will fall off into the, into the liquid. So either use salted water or what I like to do is I take a bouillon cube and I add it to the water. 
just to have it become a little flavor, make it a little more flavorful. I'm going to lightly oil my hand so that I can make the matzo balls. If you're not using any chicken fat in your matzo ball and you want to make these parb or vegetarian, then I would recommend that you use a little olive oil in the mix and in your hands because the olive oil will really mimic the chicken fat flavor a lot better than canola oil or anything else. So I'm just put a drop of oil on my hand, although you see how glistening it is. Most people for Passover, Seder, or for Friday night dinner, even their chicken soup, like to have a matzo ball that's about, some like them teeny, but usually it's about two and a half, three inches. So I'm going to take a teaspoon, believe it or not, an eating teaspoon, and make like ping pong ball size matzo balls. Just go like this, one, two, three, roll it, and then put it into your water as it's getting ready to simmer. Do it as fast as you can, only because you really want to have all the mixture. You notice they sink immediately. As soon as they come up, we want that pot covered with the lid. Now here's the point about soft matzo balls or light matzo balls versus heavy ones. I can't argue with you about which is the better way to eat matzo balls. People ask me that all the time. It's personal preference. But there's a right way and a wrong way to have a heavy matzo ball. The right way to have it is by adding a little bit more matzo meal at the beginning of making your mixture. That way there's more absorption of the moisture and it's a more dense matzo ball. The wrong way is after the matzo balls are in the pot and we put on the lid, the wrong way is to lift the lid. I always tell my students, under penalty of death, do not lift that lid. You put the lid on your pot, you then let it cook for 20 minutes. If you think that the water, is the water is boiling too fast, then all you need to do is lower the temperature. But do not lift the lid. Because what happens is your matzo bowl is not only cooking in the hot water, but it is also cooking with the steam that's produced in the pot. And if you take your lid off, you are, even if you feel like it's very hot in the kitchen, you are letting hot air into, cold air into that soup. In which case, if you take the lid off the pot, you are immediately adding cold air into the mixture and it will shrink. And when it shrinks, the matzo balls shrink. And there will be no amount of cooking time after that that will make your matzo ball light and fluffy. As a matter of fact, you can always tell if somebody has peaked, because when you cut into a matzo ball, if the interior of the matzo ball is a little bit darker and sort of glistening, that means they peaked. If it's uniform in texture and in color, it means they behaved themselves and they kept the lid on. Almost done, and they're starting to rise to the top, so I definitely need to have the lid on. Last one. A little itty bitty one. Put the lid on the pot. Probably lower the temperature. My pots are wonderful because they start to, to make noises once they're steaming. But I can lower the temperature to medium. And there we'll go. Let's see what happens in 20 minutes. Let's see what our matzo balls look like. Look at this. Big beautiful, fluffy matzo balls. Take them right out of the liquid and put them into our soup. I think if you're hungry, you can have three. Now you're ready to celebrate the holidays, feel better, or just enjoy. Eat in good health.